was rolling on down the street and I knew they were coming for me. I was rolling on down the street and I knew they were coming for me. What is going on guys? It is Adam aka Marf and today is going to be a great show. We're going to talk about the last 48 hours and everything that has transpired so stick around. We have a ton. In fact we have two days worth so we're going to get through it fast. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. I was rolling on down the street and I knew they were coming for me. I was rolling on down the street and I knew they were coming for me. Uh, all right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, aka Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today's show is going to be packed, so if you've never been here before, remember you can always go over and get our alerts, our official alerts, from us at marfuglenews.com. Now, if you're not getting notifications from the platform, make sure to go over there because, of course, ours are more reliable. Now, also, there is a ton to go over today, and every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we're going to show you here is going to be bibliographed over on Marfugal News. Com. Now, when you go over there, it's very easy to navigate. It is all done by thumbnail, and it is all uh, organized by release date. So when you go to the very top left corner, you will see today's thumbnail. Uh, Arctic, rumors swirling, of course, referencing both talking about G getting overtaken or possibly pressured to step down. And then, of course, the battle in the Arctic. The Arctic has been a, a subject over many, many years, and people have talked about how they're possibly militarizing it. And, of course, now there's proof that they've militarized it and by they I mean every country has some sort of Arctic base uh, so we're going to talk about that and what is possibly going on right now the Arctic will play an important uh, part I guess in uh, in WW3 if we do have one. So looking over their shoulders, once you click that, you'll see that it brings you to every single article, tweet, video, picture, document, article that we show you here today. That way you have access to every single uh, piece of information that we're giving you and know exactly where it is coming from, the source, where it is written, and everything else. Now once you get to a yellow bar, that is the web-only content. That is the stuff that is too hot for TV, the stuff that is too far to one direction for us to cover and keep neutral. Again, Again, we, we don't want to have people, you know, 5,000 people in chat uh, sitting there going in circles and arguing, which a lot of the subjects today is literal circle arguing where there is no winner. It's just a circle of, of arguing and hate. So we're trying to not have that as much as possible. Now, that stuff down there is an entire other show, so make sure to go check it out. Uh, let's bring in my co slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on, Dex, and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So let's get right into it. We have a ton to cover. If we don't finish an article for some reason or if it's too long to cover, remember, go over to marfuglenews.com. You can finish it there, or you can follow along on a second device and actually read it along on a tablet or a phone or whatever you want to do. Amid Bay Area housing crisis, the tiny bunk bed pods offered for $800 a month. So this is something you would probably see, you know, today in Japan, uh, and now it is coming pretty much everywhere. Now Bay Area is offering this, and 
I kind of know why. Well, the prices in Washington, California, and other places have skyrocketed so high uh, that you're getting to the point where you're over $2,000 for a studio apartment. Uh, we're talking about the kind of studios that you walk in the house, you do the tour by spinning in a circle, where the bathroom, the kitchen, the bedroom, and the living room are all the same room. Uh, those kind of studio apartments are over $2,000 here. In fact, uh, 2300 or 2400 was the average in uh, downtown Seattle. Uh, so I can see why this is becoming a thing. Uh, these literally look like containers. Uh, and it's it's kind of telling and it's telegraphing where we will be several years from now. Uh, this is, I believe, where uh, they want us to be. In fact, I think they want us to be uh, stacked high in tall buildings, uh, kind of like they are in, in different uh, places that are currently locked down across the world. Uh, so again, this is something that, you know, will be a good idea for some. This is a pod, an actual pod, and you'll have roommates, I'm assuming, and then you'll uh, rent just this bed, right? I guess you can put up some family pictures and uh, you can do your push-ups and your your burpees and, and uh, you know, hopefully your neighbor doesn't come down uh, during uh, rec time. <laughs> you know what I mean. But that's, uh, that's where the Bay Area is headed, and that's where a lot of the vast urban environments around the world are headed. Uh, they say, you know, that this is good as far as getting people together in mass mega cities, but you know what we think. Have researchers found an undersea road to the lost city of Atlantis? This is pretty fascinating because there it looks like a yellow brick road to geologic features of Lilakulani. Now, I apologize if my Hawaiian is not good enough to uh, pronounce that wrong, right, uh, but it says some paths appear to be headed to the center of the ocean, like one recently spotted by scientists in the Pacific that have dubbed the Road to Atlantis. Late last month, uh, oceanographers aboard the Evie Nautilus vessel were out exploring the floor of the something marine national monument a submarine range of volcanic mo uh, mountains off the coast of hawaii when they came across what looked like a well-preserved brick road at the bottom of the sea we'll just call this papa okay papa hana there we go uh, on april 29th the researchers were amazed to see such a structure uh, over 3,000 feet underwater near the top of nootka seamount the discovery was as part of the Lulu expedition and was captured on video during the group's 24-7 live stream on YouTube. It says it's the road to Atlantis, one scientist is heard saying in the background of the footage. So, as you can see, there are obvious kind of bricks being laid. Now, does this give credence to massive floods worldwide? Um, again, crazy. Uh, there's, there's some sea life there, but you can see there's obvious kind of bricks, uh, especially when you look here. You can even see a, uh, a sea, sea star there, uh, right there in the middle of the brick. So this is underwater. Now, m uh, I know that a bunch of you will say that this isn't, um, you know, that this isn't uh, Atlantis. This may be some, some biblical place that was un underwater and flooded. Who knows? Um, again, uh, Dex, do you want to pop in on this? This was pretty fascinating, and this is kind of it rolls off of our our previous coverings of uh, how they found a uh, chariot wheel at the bottom of where the Red Sea would have been split, uh, th that is now covered in coral and it's been there for you know hundreds thousands of years, and then of course the uh, in the Middle East they have a whole section of the Middle East where uh, the ground was salt underneath the first kind of layers of dirt. Uh, as in like a meteor or something hit so fast it turned everything to salt, which, again, was in the Bible. Uh, Dex, what do you think about this? Well, yeah, this is really fascinating. I mean, you know, on some level you can think maybe, you know, continents and stuff were shifting and moving around. But, you know, a lot of that stuff has taken so long to actually happen that, you know, um, the evolution of, of, of development like this probably didn't happen in that time period, but it also makes you wonder about things like the great flood and did that, you know, shift where waters were, or, uh, did a, you know, a pole shift or something else happen that caused some sort of, you know, great change to either elevations or to water levels, uh, and basically covering up some of these areas that may have actually been inhabited. So, uh, kind of fascinating. <laughs> Somebody said starfish. Did it? What did, what did I say? I said, uh, 
I said, I said, I don't know. I can't even remember what I said. I, uh, I, I, I thought starfish and then I said whatever else I said. Um, anyways. Yeah. So I think, I don't think they're called starfish. I think they're called something else, but anyways, so the, um, the fact is, is it, you know, people have been around for a lot longer than the current geography has, and the geography has changed, or at least this shows us that something has changed. And it, we believe, uh, I believe, that there has been massive floods across the planet, and uh, some of us believe that you know they they would know there's cycles of this happening, right? And these cycles happen and the, the world is covered. Different places are covered in these massive floods. Uh, that This could have been a biblical flood. This could have been what was, you know, in the Bible. This could have been an ancient uh, a- ancient city or something. Now, if it's Atlantis, I don't know if, I don't know what about the, the location of this would be, you know, match up with that. But uh, that would be crazy. What if we did find a city underwater complete, like, uh, you know, Atlantis type city. I know they've found found things that are kind of close and, and, uh, you know, beat up areas that were underwater. Uh, But this is pretty cool. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think this is? Do you think that this was an ancient civilization or do you think it's just a natural phenomenon that happened? And then we have conflict and weather sent food prices soaring. Now Xi's harvest is uncertain. So we know that in Xi's country, they have have been telling people to stock up and they said to stock up because of um, possible uh, lockdowns and things. And that actually did happen in Shanghai of 25 million people. uh, They did do a massive lockdown. They even in some places put barbed wire in the hallways of massive buildings you know, kind of the buildings you would see those pods in from the first story. And uh, now they are basically saying that their farm is uh, their farmlands because of many disasters are actually uh, not not very certain to be uh, to be, uh, I guess, fruitful. And this is something to be thought of in the culture over there. Uh, They think of natural disasters and flooding and things like this. They think of this as a sign that their leader is not, uh, Dex, what what was it called? The, um, uh, the, what uh, Xi is after. He's after basically this uh, ancient mandate from heaven, the mandate of heaven. And they believe that if their leader, if they have all these signs, that that's a sign from the gods saying that their leader is not doing a good job. So that might play into later stories about, uh, about the pressure of him possibly being removed or asked to step down. I think it's a bunch of BS because there's no way G it has left open a spot where people could somehow take them over unless they take them out. Uh, but this says that UKR's wheat exports have been mostly halted since uh, the invasion. Well, drought has damaged crops in India and the United States. Uh, G's upcoming harvest is another concern. So they are saying that uh, one field on the flat plains of east of Beijing was patchy with knee-high emerald stalks in some spots, while almost bald elsewhere, damaged by the torrential rains of last autumn. The next village over, a luxurious wheat crop was thriving after the spring's bright sunshine and slow-soaking rains. Uh, Xi's winter wheat harvest next month is one of the big uncertainties in a global economy already struggling with high commodity prices, particularly in regions heavily dependent on crops from Uh, Vlad and from uh, Zelensky over there. It says if the Chinese harvest is bad in the coming weeks, it could drive food prices up further, compounding hunger and poverty in the world's poorest countries. So we, a lot of us don't feel this as much because we can afford the $1 more or the $2 more. Uh, Where this is really starting to compound is in uh, uh, different places where it's already harder to get food. Guess where they're going to send the food? They're going to send the food where the money is. A lot of places are uh, basically now uh, in situations of starvation, and we don't see that in most of the developed countries. Uh, This is getting really, really bad, and like we have said many times, and we say this almost every day, because every day there has been a food-related story that is further, uh, you know, compounding the entire situation with food, and this is how you starve out a planet. I mean... Uh, there's got to be something bigger going on here. That's what most of us are thinking. And, and obviously 
this is not uh, this is not good. And this is the kind of stuff happens before uh, people rise up and and uh, countries try to take over countries and things like that. Uh, do you have a story that goes with this? Let us know. Email us. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, do you own a farm? And uh, are you struggling now because of what is going on with the planet, with the weather, with whatever? I'd love to hear from you. Adam at MarfugalNews.com or Dex at MarfugalNews.com. And then we have uh, in drought ravaged California. Water use is up dramatically. California's drought, drought, whichever tomato, tomato is worsening, and yet residents used more water in March than any other month since 2015, or that's what they're saying, defying pleas for conservation from Governor Gavin Newsom and other authorities, state officials announced on Tuesday. It says that water usage jumped nearly 19% in March, which is one of the driest months on record. Newsom uh, last summer asked residents to voluntarily cut water use by 15%. He encouraged people to water their yards less often, run dishwashers less, and install more efficient appliances. What's funny is like if you're in an HOA and you, they make you water your uh, your lawns less, I wonder if the HOAs over there are giving them a break if their uh, grass is brown. Because uh, I know a lot of places they wouldn't. As far as this goes, uh, you know, with with this entire thing, this is like, it's almost setting it up so they can just cut water off. Now, when you control resources like water, electricity, uh, food, you got yourself uh, you got yourself a po- power dynamic. Uh, and it seems like right now, all of those things are highly, highly, highly in danger of being uh, uh, essentially bottlenecked to f- very few people. And I forgot the gas and everything else, gas and, and uh, natural resources like, uh, of course, fuel, that that is something that plays into this as well. We are seeing the planet fall apart and people aren't realizing it because they say, well, I can, you know, I'll c- cut out a, a a Starbucks a day and I'll, I'll pay the two extra dollars it is for my, uh, for my cereal or whatever it may be. But it's not, it's, it's going to get worse than this. And most of us know that. So Lisa R. Hall, thank you for popping in. Island by the Sea over on DLive. Thank you. Life, live your life. Thank you. Daryl Cahoon, Anna Trejos, what's going on? Adam and Dex, much love. Daniel, yeah, it's falling apart. Uh, th- they're going to take us all out, says for Pete's sake. Wide awake, 605. Major water restrictions are being set into effect June 1st for parts of California. Exactly. And, you know, it's. It's only going to get worse when uh, they come. Uh, they uh, pile that on top of power, and the heat that is going to happen. Samantha Winchester, what's going on? Auntie Cheryl, thank you for being here. Uh, Joseph Newhouse, Badger One, uh, Haley Divine. It looks like Shirley uh, Millward. Love you, Marf. Elos and Dexcellent. Marvelous and Dexcellent. Uh, you can only water your yard on a certain day. A lady from California told me. Ah, well, maybe uh, true. It depends on what city, I would assume. Uh, They're probably all getting different rules right now. Either way, what do you think about it? Do you think it's wrong that they're able to tell you what, you know, you can do with your essential things like water? Um, Do you think it's, do you think it's actually right that they do that? Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Christina Martoccio. Uh, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate that. Thank you for the super sticker. Joseph Newhouse, maybe Atlantis uh, can be related in a sense of the Geden, uh, Garden of Eden. Uh, Joseph, that sounds like a video and a half for you. And then Irish Rebel, I just so you know, I, we appreciate your support, but you don't have to do, you know, you guys don't have to do support like that. Uh, the other day, uh, I think it was Jeff Askins. I would much rather you guys uh, spread that out or be able to... Um, I don't know, you know, do do support every day of a smaller nature uh, or support many of the creators in the Fugal family. Uh, thank you, Irish Rebel. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, we can't really say thank you enough for that. Uh, Joe Posey, thanks for the hard work, guys, and uh, above my pay grade. I appreciate that. Says, thanks for your updates. If you all are interested in supporting a military guy working to spread the truth in his peers, check out above my pay grade. Hey, smart use of the super chats. Uh, Zuper, uh, Zippy Moon's gonna catch the replay. Wish I could stay and play. Bad storms here tonight. All the love and prayers to y'all. Hey, well, Zippy, I, I'm uh, praying that nothing gets damaged or anything. I don't know what kind of storms you're dealing with, but 
when uh, when Dex tells me there's bad storms, you know, we worry because over there they've got all sorts of things. They've got tornadoes and all sorts of crazy stuff. And then we have New York City billionaire uh, Katsimatidis warns of looming East Coast diesel rationing. So this was yesterday, and this was something that could play a bigger part into everything. Uh, Dex, do you want to go over this and uh, w- w- what this could actually affect and why this is so important? Well, yeah. So this is this is sort of the one of the first alarms we're we're hearing about the potential rationing on the east coast of uh, of diesel. And so when you th- obviously you know many people may not give much consideration to diesel if you don't drive it, uh, but keep in mind all of the uh, you know long haul trucks, all the big trucks are using it. It's not just them though. Uh, and they use a significant amount because they're on the road all the time, but it's also farmers, right? Like farmers that are running equipment, the majority of them are, a lot of them are using diesel or have some form of diesel uh, in their equipment. So, you know, these, if if there are rationings or shortages on this, uh, especially coming into, you know, through the summer, you know, there could be some major impacts, uh, whether it's supply chain or even in uh, food production and and harvesting. Yeah, this is a much bigger deal than most people realize, and this could very well uh, severely affect food prices. This is yet another one, and this is this is probably four in one day of some of the stories that are affecting our food and everything else that's going on. This is why we're telling people to get your butt, you know, your heads out of your butts, and really pay attention to what is going on. And most of my audience here, and, and there may be some new people that aren't so familiar with all of this, but most of us have been following this for years, and we've never seen something like this where uh, it is on a daily basis that there is something that is going to severely impact food, prices, gas, logistics, everything else. And I would take this guy seriously because uh, the position he's in, he already knows uh, this isn't this isn't one of those crazy end of the world warnings. This is a warning of of something that is completely and utterly not only possible, it's going to happen, and we know because it's on a ladder. And it, it, basically, when you see this happen, there's steps that need to happen before it happens, and that's what has happened. So we are we are going to see the diesel rationed. I, I bet you money. Watch. So this is not good. <clears throat> This is Katsimatidis, and he has said things before, and he's been absolutely right. Uh, there's been at least two times where he called this stuff three months in advance. So get yourself in it. But again, like Dex said, people don't pay attention to stuff like diesel, but you will pay attention to it when it's coming out of your checkbook. Because when it's coming out of your pocket and out of your wallet, you will understand. Uh, that's why all of the stuff that is being transported all over the world, all over the country, is diesel. Those, all those big rigs are diesel or biodiesel or whatever kind of diesel it is. They're all being transported with these big rigs. All right, before we move on, I would highly recommend going over to EMP Shield if you haven't already. EMP Shield is a way to actually defend yourself against all three phases of an EMP. It can also protect you against a CME. We talk about solar events all the time, just like we showed you the lost city of Atlantis earlier or the possible. Uh, Those kind of events, some think that were actually done by solar events that shook up our whole planet and made everything go haywire. Now, we do know for a fact that we will have another Carrington level event. It's not a uh, an if, it's a when. And most believe that we're overdue. They say on average of every 150 years, we get a Carrington level event, uh, essentially a huge CME that hits us. And we are now overdue. We're over 160 years. Uh, The last one, again, we didn't even have modern day electricity. We had we had uh, the beginnings of it. We had telegraphs and the telegraphs and even the headsets that the telegraph operators wore caught fire. That's how strong it was. Now, uh, the stuff back then was nowhere near as sensitive as the stuff is now. And we are 100 uh, percent completely dependent on it. <clears throat> Now, if these were in every building across the country and across the planet, we would have no issue. But it's not going to get there, and it's not going to get there for years and years and years unless they do something drastic. There's ways that you can protect your own home. You can protect your cars so you don't go and you end up stopped uh, in the middle of the street. Uh, This will actually ground the signal from a CME or an EMP in 500 trillionths of a second. 
There's no better way to protect yourself. Again, this can they make different devices for your uh, boats, for your cars, your RVs. If you have a backup motorcycle you're going to use if there's traffic. Uh, if you have a ham radio, you can even buy a device for that. If you have one of the energy solar generators already, you can actually get an EMP shield to protect that as well. If you have generators, that is a huge deal as far as protecting your generators. Uh, that is, you know, you can either build a, a, a five foot Faraday cage or you can get one of these wired in and it's good. That's marfuglenews.com slash EMP. I believe this will save lives or at least make lives a lot easier if something really, really bad happens. And out of all of the kind of crazy scenarios that could happen, these are the most probable. Those two, EMP or CME. CME is a guaranteed. We just don't know when. That's again, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. And that's again, the same company uh, that is uh, in the EMP uh, resilience report by the DHS and uh, doing stuff for DOD, DHS, and the DEMSO team uh, helping protect the Texas grid. So the entire United States grid is in some way connected to EMP Shield. Again, they they have blown up since we first started working with them. They used to make them by hand in a small building in Kansas. Now they're making them by hand, but in a lot more buildings. So. All right, and then uh, let's go over to AI surveillance cameras now being used to detect potential threats. We warned you about this years ago. In fact, Dex and I have gone at length and talked about this before I even had Dex with me. I talked about the weird AI things that have been going on. Uh, first, in G country, uh, they actually came up with a system that could detect somebody would uh, be a shoplifter before they would do it. Uh, and how they did that is with AI, looking at body language, uh, body temperature, uh, facial recognition, and uh, jitteriness, and all sorts of things. They would look at how they're shaky, how they're looking over their shoulder, uh, how they walk, how they pace, how they look around, uh, what the, if their body temperature goes up. And they would be able to tell within like a 97% accuracy if somebody was about to steal. They actually tested it real time and they were able to catch people before they did it. They let them steal, but then they, they had people ready for them to, to grab them. And this is something that is now going to be put everywhere. The, the reason I know this is because places like Walmart, uh, places like Target, Target already has uh, a super advanced system with facial recognition, and they even have a, um, what is that called when the, uh, 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 Dex, when you're in a crime scene, what do they call that when... Uh, Forensics. They have a geolocation. No, no, no. They have a world class forensics team at Target. Uh, they have a headquarters where they send all the information because now, uh, because of so much theft, they are actually using the facial recognition in all the systems, and they're using fingerprints. They're doing everything. This is and this is at Target. People think, oh, they don't do anything at Target. What they do is they compile felony cases. They'll let you steal $501 DVDs until you get into the felony range or whatever state, you know, sometimes it's 1000 or 500 They'll let you steal and walk out with it until they can get you with the felony, and then they'll get you for that, or they'll get you for organized uh, uh, theft. So th th these kind of systems are being put in place all over the world. It says it's just a simulation, but it feels real as the employee carrying out the demonstration inside acute offices in Midtown Manhattan walks in carrying a Mach 815 rifle. In a matter of seconds after the employee is visible in the office space, a surveillance camera in the room goes into action. A green flash pulsates across the monitor, sets up in another corner of the room after the video management system recognizes a potential threat in the room. It says, as you can see, it's pulsing green within about a second or two. That means an alert has been registered. As uh, Actuate uh, CEO and co-finder Sonny Tai says, quote, our AI model has been made has made a detection and sent an alert to video management systems. The company is utilizing emerging technology that uses artificial intelligence software for surveillance cameras to detect potential problems. 
It says, quote, we initially built our company as a gun detection company in response to a lot of active bang bang threats uh, that happened over the years. After the Las Vegas event in 2017, Ty, who is a former captain in the U.S. Marine Corps, surveyed law enforcement agencies across the country asking what could be done. It says a common refrain heard from a lot of them was a wish uh, was a wish security camera could automatically uh, identify threats. So say you walk into a Walmart and you have a big bang bang. Right away, an alarm would go off. They would have people en route to you already. This, in uh, theory, sounds good. But the other reasons for this and the other things that they can do with the same system and use that same AI, say to detect. Dex, have you thought of some things that this could be misused for? I mean, think about that. They could do all uh, sorts of stuff. I was thinking about all the accidents that could happen if they, you know, add additional functionality like to, you know, not just detect, but then to thwart, you know, what happens when they have, uh, you know, a misread. Exactly. Um I mean, we see a future world where eventually they could have uh, defensive weapons in stores. So it takes the, the threat out as it walks in. That sounds crazy now, but watch. All it will take is a couple big events for, for them to legalize that and do it. So say you walk in with a bang bang, it, it, the camera system notifies it, and then it goes pff, pff, and just takes you out right there at the doorway. You think that that's uh, Black Mirror? Well... We'll see. The world's going to change in the next eight years. We'll see where we go. And then Tesla's stock slide raises doubts about Elon Musk's Twitter purchase. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth and just a lot of talk about this. Dex, do you want to talk about this real quick? Well, yeah, as you may uh, know, uh, a lot of the stocks in the, in the market are going down. And, um, Elon was using uh, leverage from his the value of his stock to, uh, for in part, he was getting loans because uh, he didn't want to just flat out sell the stock. Um, and, and, and he raised money from others as well. But um, if you can imagine, you know, if a big chunk of his value in Tesla drops, he may not have as much uh, margin, if you want to call it that, or as much available credit uh, for the loan. Um, and that's and what you're seeing is the the street, so to speak, or the investors sort of hedging that. They're sort, of, they're, they're sort of going, hmm, we don't know if he'll actually be able to afford this now because he's no longer as rich as he was a month ago, right? Um, so when you think about like he was going to, he's buying the shares at $54.20, right? So in theory, if you were buying and selling, you know, Twitter stock today, it should be worth $54.20 because he's willing to pay that for it in the, in the near future when it closes. Uh, but the actual price of the stock is around 46 or at the time of this, it was, you know, around $46. So the, the street is sort of saying, we're not really sure he's actually going to be able to pull this off. And so that's why the price has come down. So um, uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, he may have to raise more money. He may just, you know, eat it and, and deal with it. But it, you know, certainly when you don't have as much money and, and you lose a lot of money in a month, just like the, all the other billionaires did. Um, you know, part of me thinks that if all the other stocks are going down, then the value of Twitter stock is going to go down. But unfortunately, he made a price commitment on purchasing it at a certain price point. So now they have to then negotiate from there. Now knowing why he, you know, there's a, a few reasons why Twitter is so valuable, but uh, for the information and for the AI perspective, as far as if they can use Twitter to train AI systems, as far as how people think, how people respond and things like this, um, I understand why Musk actually, you know, may have actually acquired this. Uh, you have a worldwide spectrum of everyone's opinions and their thoughts and how they think and how they respond. Think about that. When somebody responds to a tweet, it's it's the most compact way they can do. It's it's them thinking and thinking and thinking and coming up with the best response to any answer because they have to. They only have 160 characters and they have to really think about their response. Uh, if it most, most of you are not on Twitter, and I know that because there's, what, uh, three in ten Americans are on, uh, uh, on uh, Twitter and that's the majority of our audience. 
But Twitter is a very powerful tool. It has run whole countries. There's other countries that are 8 and 10, 9 and 10, uh, that really do depend on it for their news, for everything. Uh, it has pictures and videos that share like instantly. Uh, it is one of the few sites that, you know, a lot of that gets out. So I can see why this is this is such a big deal. And then we have UKR relief bill passes despite some GOP opposition. Now, most of you have been watching this over the last couple of days in a sign of growing dis discontent with the B administration approach toward the uh, Russ UKR event. It says 57 House Republicans voted late Tuesday against H.R. 7691. The UKR Supplemental Appropriations Act. Supplemental. We'll just supplement. We'll just give them money. The bill provides an additional $40 billion in UKR aid, $7 billion more than the B administration had requested. An overall view of provided aid comes from the AP. So this goes over. I won't go over all of it. Uh, again, I would definitely recommend you to go to the website and find this. But essentially, a huge chunk of money is heading towards UKR. And for those in the very beginning, it was like within two months, we had already given away or, or given them tons of money. And people were like, well, the Afghanistan war costs $280 million a day or something like that. And it's like, well, yeah. And if you divide that, that was over 20 years. And it was an crazy, crazy amount. We're already on track to way beat that. And with inflation, we're talking about this is going to way beat that out of the water. Hopefully this doesn't last 20 years. It, it's like, where does this money really go? Where is the oversight in where this money goes? Do they just get a check and are able to use this money to pay people to do this, to do that? You know, in in, uh, in uh, the Middle E, a lot of money and a big chunks of money went to pay off villages. They would pay off villages for safety or for protection or for this or for that. Or if they destroyed something, they would just give like a settlement. It was like court without court. Uh, if anybody wants to chime in that has experience over there, uh, did you hand villagers money because you may have destroyed part of their buildings or this or that? There was just so much money going out and a lot of it was cash, just cash in hand. And think about where the mistakes can happen. There's, I'm sure you guys had some sort of system to write it down. But what if you said you had one translator in a group of 40? There's room for an ex, you know, a twenty thousand uh, dollar, you know, pad of money to be thrown to somebody else or to be thrown back to somebody here. Dex. Well, let's not forget about private contracting too, right? You know, we what it costs us for a sol for a soldier uh, versus someone who then comes back out and goes back over as a private contractor and ends up making three hundred grand a year. Uh, we're paying for that, right? And and a lot of that money funnels right back into you know those special groups, uh, funnels back into um, the industrial complex, right? And all of the equipment that keeps getting purchased and and replaced and and built in. So, you know, this money goes, and it, I don't, I wouldn't say it's going to show up at the doorstep of you know somebody who's hungry in uh, UKR, right? It's going to go into these big big groups that are using it and funneling it probably back uh, in other ways. I think some people should go follow the money, so to speak, because you'll probably be surprised when you see how the money gets spent, who gets it, um, and then who those people support um, and those groups support when they receive this money. So this will this will be eye-opening as it continues to play out. There's always a reason for these uh, big, big politicians to be on the board for some of these contracting companies. That's the easiest way this can go. So they send, so they have military contractors go over there. And some of you that were military contracted know this. Uh, they get these huge contracts and say they'll build a, a water pipeline over there, but they'll get paid some crazy amount of money because it's in a dangerous area or this or that. There will be so much for the actual materials and then there will be so much for the company and for each employee and the contract is way bigger, or they can be. It could be inflated way, way out of it. Uh, there were things where Oversight ended up looking back at some of the stuff over the previous 20-year conflict from 2001 to where, wherever. And in over there, they had weird things like... Uh, 
just an example, and I, I didn't don't know if that was it was like uh, take for example a twenty thousand dollar toilet seat for a, a you know a fancy jet or something, you know how can a uh, toilet seat be twenty thousand dollars? Well, it probably isn't. Now that's just an example. They could price a piece of lumber at fifty five dollars or something when it's actually eight. That extra money could go into something else. They can inflate the charge that a company does. So if if they're going to transport it from one village to the next, they'll say, well, we need, you know, forty five thousand dollars. It's dangerous. There's boom booms going off. There's mines. And then twenty thousand of it will go towards the company and twenty five will go back to the owners of the man, man, the military contractors. And guess who's on the board of all these military contractors? All the people that we see in Congress and Senate. There's very powerful people, and that goes for every other country too. Europe, UK, all those UK people, they're all involved. To, to get those contracts, they're friends with these people, and they hand them up some money and go, hey, give my company a contract. They go to schmooze events, and they go, oh, my, my friend, you know, my son Chet is going to go play tennis with your son Chet. Because they're all named Chet. Okay? There's a lot of Chets out there. Chet and Brett's. Is troops accused of <laughs> U.S. Al Jazeera journalist after she is bang bang dead while reporting in the West Bank? Big deal because this is an Al Jazeera journalist. It says Is has been accused of taking out a U.S. Al Jazeera journalist who was uh, bang bang well reporting from the West Bank. Shirin Abu Akhu Akle, 51, was covering unrest in the Janine refugee camp when she was perished forcefully and is claimed it was, quote, likely it was a pala that killed her. Now, these kind of events are easily some of the most triggering for any kind of bigger event to happen. Uh, Dex, this actually could play a bigger part or a response. Uh, they can easily yeah. mark this off. Any country could have done this and start things between two parties. It's very, it's a hot zone over there. We have not forgotten with Vlad and, and Zelensky and all, and President B and all this. We have not forgot to keep looking over there because some WW3 could trigger somewhere completely different. Uh, that is one of the hot points of the world. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what plays out because right now they're both pointing fingers across the aisle, so to speak, right? They're on one hand, they're saying they, the other side did it. And the other side is saying they did it. Um, there's video evidence that has allegedly come out that can sort of prove one side versus the other, but I don't think the side that is necessarily guilty on by video is necessarily admitting it. Um, so the point being, these are definitely, these are clashing, uh, you know, uh, entities on either side so this like you said can easily be a rallying call or an escalation um at least by one side for sure uh if not if not the the other but probably the one side is going to use this as as a point of reference and and use it as a as a means to escalate it very well could be and we're paying attention to it <clears throat> Uh, before we move on, and we're going to talk about the Arctic, make sure to go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. If you don't have short and long-term survival food covered, we have a solution for you. Uh, again, if we show you the problem, we want to make sure that we also show you a solution. Uh, this is a great way to get yourself sealed MREs that are bucketed up so you can actually store them however you would like. This food lasts years. Again, this is uh, amazingly done uh, freeze-dried and MRE foods that can actually be stored for a very long time. And that way, later on, whether this food is not uh, attainable in the future or the price has gone up so much that it is virtually unattainable, uh, you get it now. Make sure to line up your ducks now rather than when you need it. Uh, it's most people's kind of thing is to don't fix it until it's broken. Well, after the last two years and when shelves went dry, most of you understand that you should have this, uh, but it's all a deal of how easy is it to get. Well, 
marfuglenews.com slash prep goes through my Patriot Supply. When you order it, you're going to have it soon, and you are going to be able to do with it what you want. On top of that, this website also has iodine tablets. If there is a slight worry in your head about anything nuclear, uh, then that would be a place where you can get it. You can also get a purification system called the Alexa Pure Pro. That is a gravity-fed, huge system that actually can filter a ton of water all at once, and it is, again, uh, much more affordable than some of its competitors, and its quality is up there with the best. Again, this is an extremely, extremely good system. If you don't trust what's in your water or in the future, you need to have a ton filtered. And again, remember, the water is going to stop if the power goes out. There are a million different things that could happen around the country. It doesn't have to be the end of the world. It could be a power outage. Uh, it could be an earthquake it could be many things that would stop your water you can pretty much turn any kind of water source into drinkable potable water so go over to marfuglenews.com prep this also helps us and uh, they have extended again uh, we are I don't know how much time we have left on the extension but uh, they extended the $150 off on the three month supply that is something that will not last forever so if you do want to get a three month supply of food then make sure to go check it out and uh, make sure to go do so as sooner sooner than uh, sooner than later. Again, that also helps the independent channel you're watching right now. We uh, do not have a multi-billion dollar company behind us. We don't have uh, again a multi-channel network. We have you. We don't have anybody protecting us. So your help it goes a million miles. So thank you so much. All right, and then. The Army poised to revamp Alaska forces to prep for the Arctic fight. It says the U.S. Army is poised to revamp its forces in Alaska to better prepare for future cold weather conflicts. And it is expected to replace the larger, heavily equipped Striker Brigade in the state with a more mobile infantry uh, unit better suited for the frigid fight, according to Army leaders. Army Secretary Kristen Wormuth said that she expects to make a final decision soon about the Alaska troop change, saying that she will likely convert the Striker unit. It says which uses heavy eight-wheeled vehicles to an infantry brigade. It says, quote, I think right now the purpose of the Army forces in Alaska is much more about creating an extreme cold weather capable formation. Now, we talked about when they moved recently in the last year and a half, they moved huge artillery up there. They also moved the Iron Dome system to Guam. They're setting up for, uh, for Xi and for other threats. The, the whole thing is they've been telegraphing for the last few years that they have now switched over from T cells and all of these things and all of these other threats. And mysteriously, all of the, the random events where people were just walking in places and bang, banging, all of the cars, you know, swooping into people, um, all of the different boom, booms that were going off around the world. Those just kind of went away. Isn't that kind of weird to you? Maybe they were nation state paid actors or patsies. I don't know. But it is kind of weird that those things kind of just faded away. Did they come up with a defensive system to stop people from swerving onto sidewalks? No. So it makes you wonder uh, everything that is going on right now. You know, what what is the deal, right? So as far as this goes, it telegraphs the threats that are going to come. And when you look at back at history, before all of those events that happened that kind of went away... They, they telegraphed those things. They said, we are preparing for this. We're pre preparing for that. We're preparing for this. And then it happened. Makes you think, well, maybe those some of these events were something that they knew because they knew nation state actors were behind them. So just keep in mind, Alaska is being prepped. The Arctic is being prepped. Uh, the An Antarctica has bases that are buzzing. So in these, in these cold climates, you have two different parts of the world that are getting beefed up. Why? Well, they're both important parts uh, of the, the world that would have something to do with a direct conflict between us and G and us and Vlad. Something is going on and we know it, but most people are asleep to it or just want to say it's taboo or it's fear mongering or it's war mongering or this or that, or, well, you're just scaring people. Why are you scared? If you knew about this and you've been following it for years, you'd be the, la the last thing you'd be is scared. You'd be more like, okay, when is this going to happen? Like, we're ready. It says, uh, 
it says we're trying to get uh, up to a place where we have Arctic capable forces, forces that can survive and operate in that environment. Well, why do they need that? It says the U.S. has long viewed the Arctic as a growing area of competition with Vlad and China, particularly as climate change brings warmer temperatures and opens the sea lanes for longer periods of time. But officials have acknowledged that the U.S. lags behind those nations. Vlad has taken steps to increase its military presence there, and Xi views the region as economically valuable for shipping and natural resources. So it does play a huge part in what is going on. Um, I want to say a special thank you to everybody over on DLive that is chiming in right now with their opinions. And again, thank you for the glory of Christ. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, Renegade PD, MC Dirty Work, Skyhouse, Chewy Weather. Uh, we have, of course, J Girl, that's me, Vicky K. Thank you again for being here. Release the Quacken, uh, Comet Moon, and Life is Better on Stilts. Thank you, everybody that's supporting over there. And then we have uh, Shirley Millward. Thank you for your support. Thanks for the 1K in Fugal Fam, Shirley. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad that you. Uh, I, I'm glad you hit the mark. Stephen Stephen McMahon. Thank you so much. Anna Trejos says Adam Greenland is uh, what truly is there. Thank you. Yeah, Greenland, which is covered in ice. Yeah, lots of weird stuff. We've covered that, by the way. Type in Greenland on the search bar at marfuglenews.com. You'll see the stuff we've done. Um, not only on the movie. In fact, I think the first shows that pop up are about the show, the, the movie Greenland about the meteor. But you should look because Greenland is important. Remember T-Man was talking about buying it and all these weird things? Well, uh, part of the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about these uh, citizenships that are being bought as a plan B. Uh, Greenland was in that list. Did you guys know that? So people are buying citizenships to Greenland. What in the world is going on? Thank you for all the information and heads up on what is developing. Andromeda, have you heard the latest? Concern about New Madrid Fault. Ron, concern about the New Madrid Fault. New Madrid Fault isn't it? Well, I, I mean, it's not a new concern. <clears throat> uh, heard the latest. Um, I, I would assume everyone should be concerned about that fault it's a ticking time boom boom see mm -mm, i'm i'm what's going on Aval avanel uh, hansen thank you for your support i appreciate that and then uh infinity employee xfinity employee i can help with your internet striker chaos um yeah i don't know it has it it hasn't been robotic today but uh, again thank you if it's laggy can you help yourself i don't know have we been lagging? Let me know in the chat. Uh, but yeah, we, we did have one issue, and I just had to reset my router. Bones and Tubbs show. Uh, got here late, Fugal fam. Love y'all. Is it strange that baby formula is hard to find the same time people are arguing for Roe? Talk to you later. Head head on a swivel. That's right. Bible Talk uh, 777 says, Because thou hast the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Hey, Bible Talk, thank you for the quote, and thank you for the, the verse there. Uh, I don't, which one is that? Uh, Puppy Monkey Baby says, good luck, people going through t uh, tough times coming. Uh, and then Shirley Millward, her, here's a little something for you. Thank you. Christina Moritocchio, I appreciate that as well. Thank you, guys. Joe Posey uh, and everyone else that has popped in right now. A lot of new subscribers. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I appreciate you. What do you think is going on in the Arctic? Let me know in the chat. I will be turning that on here in a second. And then the bodies of Putin's fallen troops are loaded into refrigerated carriages. This was big yesterday. People were talking about this uh, because I, there's a big debate if this is, you know, if this is Gando or not. It says that Vlad's death train, that the bodies of Putin's fallen troops are loaded into refrigerated carriages in UKR with morgue workers finding gold looted from civilians on corpses. So what are they saying here? They're saying that Vladian soldiers were going in, taking out UKR villages and people, and then looting their gold. Does this sound familiar? What does this make them sound like? Dex. Does this not make a comparison to WW2 and to somebody else famous? Yeah, it, it, it certainly does. There's there's an, an element of uh you know 
of, of sniff test here that you kind of have to put on. But, you know, this, this, this is a video and we know that videos can, uh, you know, be falsified. We know that they can be, you know, completely made up or we know that they can just be talked about and, and sensationalized. Um, at the same time, it could be completely true too. Uh, we, we won't really know, but this is what's being reported. And one thing I want to point out, and this is gonna, this is really gonna make you start scratching your head, and and it will make you look back at the last two months. Have you noticed that even though the whole world has all of these famous journalists, and and there's every country of the world has their uh, legacy media, have you noticed that every single article coming out about what's going on is coming from a UKR source? Um, the, the only question here is like, have we ever looked to UKR for their, uh, journalistic integrity and, and, uh, have we looked at them as like the, the, the overall source of everything? Now it makes sense right now because that's where it's coming out of, right? It's, it, it's happening there, but why aren't our journalists there talking about this? Well, first off in the very beginning, they wouldn't even let the troops embed with what was going on around there. Do you remember this? Even on the borders they didn't let the media embed with these troops. Why? And then every single thing is from a UKR source. Every article you see, especially all of this, is coming from a UKR source. It's coming from this guy or this guy or this guy in their uh, structure. If you look at the history, it's like, well, in the past, that wouldn't be the most trusted thing. So, but... Mainly, look at this. They are basically saying that this they are acting as if they are NAZIs in in uh, Germany in WW2. And guess what Vlad is claiming about the other half? The same exact thing. Even in his, in his speech, he said NAZ, NAZI filth, right? Dex? Well, not just not letting journalists in, but some other actions were taken in UKR by their leadership to oust certain media groups and roll other media groups into, uh, you know, sort of a government sponsored or approved, I should say, uh, group. Right. So the media there is very much controlled now, uh, just like you would expect, say, in, um, you know, Vlad's country or in G's country where the media is controlled. So yeah, you do have to take all of this with a, with a big grain of salt. I should get a Costco salt shaker or one of those comedic ones like this, you know, you know, I'll just fill it with like white sand or something and just put it in front of the camera every time. Uh, it's more of a grain. The only reason I say that is because look at what's happening right now. This is Ganda. This is this is when you see a conflict, when you see a world conflict like this, you would be seeing Ganda out of every country. And now Ganda is coming out of every country. And if you're wondering, like, how do you, how can you tell what Ganda is? Well, look at what bottlenecks only up to like one source. Why is there not multiple sources on certain images? Why are there not conflicting uh, information on, on that besides the enemy, which again, Vlad is the enemy to the world right now. And with Vlad G and all them, the, uh, NATO Alliance is the enemy. So it's, it's two sided our side or their side. And there's no variances of their side. There's no variances of our side. It's all just one way or the highway. Satellite images suggest that G may have developed new class of nuclear powered submarine, which is, uh, is a, <laughs> sorry to say, but I've been telling you guys for years that they have now made the largest Navy and they're coming up on the technology and AI, uh, tip where they are beyond us. They're farther along in AI and technology. And I'm not saying this, the Pentagon is saying that we are behind in AI and in technology. How? How did we let this happen? How did we let a country like this, which everybody scoffed at for so long and said, oh, if it's made there, it's just going to fall apart. And now they're making better uh, materials and better things than us. Some of you may think that's blasphemy, but guess what? That's what our government is saying, not me. So what the hell is happening here? If it's true, we're in trouble. 
Satellite images of a shipyard suggest that the country may have developed a new class of nuclear-powered attack submarine. It says the images clearly show a submarine in the dry dock, but shrouds over key areas of the vessel make it difficult to determine whether it is an entirely new class of ship or merely an upgrade to an existing model. The changes in question relate to an adding of vertical launch launching missile tubes for guided missiles, as well as an upgraded propulsion system. The images were captured uh, at Xi's Haladulu port in the Leoning province. It's funny. Uh, they have also caught satellite images. It's like a, as Shanghai is closed down, there's a lot of stuff going on in that port. Do you think that they are shutting down that those cities and those ports because they're doing other stuff with them? Dex? Hey, I just grabbed the image. I know it didn't load, so it's in uh, screener if you want to show it. Okay, one second. It may, may have. Hold on. No, it didn't. Let's see. All right, this is, and this is from All Source on uh, Twitter. Let's see here. So here is the image here. <clears throat> Geont analysis from 26 April to May uh, 3rd of 22 shows a possible new class of submarine. Possible escape hatch, control veins on sail, smooth casing, cruciform rear control veins, possible escape hatch on the back, and then possible shrouded propulsion. Uh, now, why the propulsion would matter is if they come up with a quieter system that is silent as far as and look at how big that is so that's probably a 60 foot 70 foot boat next to it this thing's hundreds of feet um in fact there is a container in shot so this has got to be even bigger than that it's probably two three hundred feet uh this is giant wow that is huge if th those are the cranes that list lift the container uh to put in perspective right here i don't know if you can i believe you can see my mouse Right here, this is the width of a container. So, because that is meant, that's a very specific uh, lift that lifts the container up and puts it onto the boat. And do you notice how there's no containers whatsoever? I believe, isn't Leoning one of the major exporting uh, places? Dex, can you look that up? It, it probably is, but this is a shipyard, so you can sort of see some other um, ships on, on the side there that are would be lifted by those cranes as well so what? they're not that not as big obviously but i don't know that we would see as much in this image of uh, containers well there's no containers that's what's weird this this uh yeah, this, crane yeah, is this specific is where they would work on this is physically where they would work on ships only not containers do we know that though i think it said in the article i think it said it, it said it was a shipyard where it was spotted Where's all the other ships? <laughs> I guess there's one. Hey, what is this star building? I guess if somebody wants to dig, Joseph, you want to dig what this star... Uh, what is it? I don't want to call it a starfish. <laughs> what is that? It's like a restaurant or a... Uh, looks like it has decks. Can't be a, a boat. Uh, I know Shanghai and there's one other huge port. I thought it was Leoning. I know because I've ordered things and it, I want to say it came from Leoning. And they have completely shut down the uh, Shanghai port. And that's one of the two big hubs. Crazy, crazy. And then Xi surrounds Taiwan for a massive invasion rehearsal drill. Yeah. It says the Xi military deployed forces all around the island of Taiwan over the weekend in a set of large-scale military drills that one military analyst called a rehearsal of possible real action. I like that. They were practicing to possibly really do it. 
On Monday, the PLA announced its Eastern Theater Command organized maritime aerial conventional missile and other forces around Taiwan and carried out drills around the island from Friday to Sunday. The Eastern Theater Command said that the were intended to test and improve the joint operations capability of multiple services and arms. While Taiwan governs itself as an independent nation, Xi considers the island a part of its territory, and Xi officials have repeatedly discussed reunification with the island, including by means of military force. Which there's also been quotes saying that we're at the end of the line, and this is where we take it back. So... The timeline on this is really up, but from our military groups, they, they believe it's in the next six months. But that's, again, coming from vets and retired, so we don't know how, you know. Um, I have not heard that yet from an active duty. Uh, let's see here. What do you think, though? What do you think is uh, is going to be the, the timeline on them taking Taiwan. Xi says, warned U.S. warship as it transited the Taiwan Strait. It says the guided missile cruiser USS Port Royal sails through the Pacific Ocean on December 13th, uh, 2005. It said that Xi's military said on Wednesday that it had monitored and warned a U.S. warship that had sailed through the sensitive Taiwan Strait, a mission that happened shortly after Xi carried out its drills near the island. So basically, they popped up, and then we popped up. The U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet said that the guided missile cruiser USS Port Royal conducted a routine Taiwan Strait transit through the international waters in accordance with the international law. They keep saying this, but they say it's not international waters, that they have all of that between them and Taiwan. So they do this kind of back and forth where they will do something, and then we will do something, and we'll pop in. But many believe now that we will not step in in the middle of this conflict, especially with what's going on with UKR, because it would essentially be a um, <clears throat> it would essentially be WW3. And then <clears throat> then we have the Great Wall of naval targets discovered in G Desert. Now, before we talk about this, that is a pretty big one. I do want to remind you right now, so the sale uh, officially ended and got re-extended. And the only reason why is many people did not know because we did not, we did not uh, know. And while we, uh, the uh, official site was essentially $100 off on the main unit of energy solar generators, uh, because there were so many people that missed it and requested, they are extending it for eight more days. Uh, but other than that, it is limited to that. And when the eight days is up, it's over. Uh, if you have not got yourself an energy solar generator, this is an entire system. So again, it, there is $100 off on the main unit. Uh, this is a, an amazing system where as n instead of a built-in battery, it is actually expandable. So you can actually add not one, not two, not three. You can go up to 96 batteries. Uh, just one uh, with the main unit is powering my whole studio. I've got my two power bars with uh, seven plugs each, and I've got my music gear and my lights and my LEDs and my router on this. So if we do lose our power, uh, this will be our backup. That way we don't lose a show because of power. Uh, again, this is Energy, one of the best and highest quality solar generators out there. It is absolutely silent. Uh, this is literally silent. There is no sound that comes from this, so nobody from down the block will be uh, hearing your generator in your backyard going off, and uh, during an SHTF situation, that's the last thing you want. Uh, they're stackable, they're modular, and they're moddable, so you can actually get mods, say a middle piece that actually allows uh, for... Uh, three times the charging capabilities as far as you can plug in three times the amount of panels. Now, if you don't have solar panels yet or if you don't have uh, the ability to get the unit and the solar panels right now, you can actually do that over time. You can even grab solar panels from uh, Amazon if you want. But again, you, I would highly recommend going with their foldable, portable uh, solar panels that they make. Uh, but again, you can also charge this from the wall. As long as you do have power, you can keep it fully charged, have it plugged into the wall, and then if your power goes out, you'll have a backup uh, that has this power ready to go. 
Uh, but again, this is something that is extremely, extremely coveted. Right now, there is a waiting list. That waiting list has now been shortened. Uh, again, it was four months. Now it is two months. It looks like July is when you would be getting it. So you need to get on the list sooner. The, all the Fugal fam that has already gotten theirs, they are absolutely ecstatic about it because it is an amazing system. Go over to marfuglenews.com slash energy. Uh, there, are, there are multiple things that will be extended. On the website, it may say that it's ending uh, today, but they did say they were going to extend it. So make sure to go over and check it out now. marfuglenews.com slash energy, I-N-E-R-G-Y. Not only will we be getting discounts on certain packages, but you'll also be helping out our channel. This could save lives, and I believe even in just a power outage or in a situation where there's rolling blackouts, this could become one of the most handy things you have in your home. All right, and then Great Wall of Naval Targets discovered in the East Desert. We've talked about the, of course, the how they set up mock targets of our carriers. And it is getting crazier because, again, they are still doing it and they are honing uh, their ship-killing skills for potential future conflicts on new targets in a remote desert. According to new satellite photos reviewed by USNI News, new analysis shows the People's Elevation Army testing the ability to hit ships in port with long-range ballistic missiles. Now, remember, they were also testing these underwater explosives that could tear out whole ports like a Pearl Harbor from underneath. Uh, in fact, they have these torpedoes that would go in and they're so powerful they would knock out whole ports of ships. Basically Pearl Harbor, but underwater. And it says that uh, that was separate. Now they are testing and they're, they're trying to go specifically for these port targeting, knocking out our ports with our ships in it. Uh, it says, since USNI News reported that G has been building aircraft carrier targets in the Takamalakan uh, Desert, other target sites have emerged forming a string of large-scale target sites, uh, and it says uh, uh, running along the eastern edge of the desert. So th these are more images. How much do people need to really get woke up here? So they have metal sheets, and then th this is they do it to specific sizes so they can do the exact size of it so they can target that with their systems. Look at that. And you can even see where it was, it was hit in the center of the ship. These are docks. <laughs> I mean, like, this is just nuts. How much? How much more do you need? That they basically need to. Um, they just need to send a letter and say, "Hey, we're going to invade on this day." Guess then, uh, people go, "Oh, well, it's it's on CNN, so I'll believe it." So just let that sink in. Literally sink. In. And then we have Z Z10 attack helicopter flew into Taiwan's air defense zone for the first time. Uh, this is we have a lot of these these uh, ADIZ kind of entrances. This was the first of its kind with the Z10 attack helicopter. Uh, Dex, do we have a picture? The picture didn't load in this of the the attack helicopter. This thing's pretty uh, insane looking when you see the picture of it and let me uh, pop over to screener let's see here and by the way uh, thank you survival living for your uh, PayPal I appreciate that like I've said I'm just gonna return that next time I get on your live last time I got in like 30 seconds before you ended so I apologize about that Did you get it? Yep, I just got okay. it. Thank you. So this is this is what uh, just did an ADIZ entrance into Taiwan on top of the drills all around. This right here. 
So very specific purposes for these. If you're military, then you'd probably guess what these are. I mean, this is an attack one. This is something that would hit a specific target, be very, very, um, very agile, could go into small spaces, uh, could really fly in and get something very specific. Uh, plus, it would be able to fly in low and fast. Uh, th this would be something to knock out a specific system or, in, I mean, in, in chat, you can tell me what you think it's for. Uh, also, it could be done for a few if in the front to do radar. It's harder to hit. It's smaller target. It is, um, again, if, if it flies incredibly low, which they do, uh, they can they can do all sorts. Of, it's harder to hit something like this if it's weaving through buildings. I mean, think about that. If you target something, weave through two buildings, then you're hitting the building and not the helicopter. So not not a fun. And then rumors swirl that Xi Jinping will step down amid harsh CV lockdowns. This, I think, is total BS. I don't think there's any way he would have left the door open to do this unless he actually wants to retire. But after all the previous things he's done to actually uh, stay in power, I don't think this is the case. Dex, do you want to talk about your opinion about this? We debated before the show. Um, not even yeah, more I think of a the, debate. But. Yeah, the interesting part of this is that um, the the other person, the premier, uh, Lee King Kong, I, can't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize. But he, he has been making statements. And I don't want to say contradictory, but it's sort of like coming out uh, from underneath Xi in the light, so to speak, right? And so just recently, even in today and other times, they, he's getting more coverage, um, this premier is, uh, in relation to this. So that that is the rumored person who would potentially take over. And I guess part of the rumors are, is that if that he's actually making most of the decisions and, and Xi is, is just a figurehead until they have their next big meeting um, and actually name someone if if this is actually true. Again, this is all rumored, right? Um, it's coming from a major uh, news outlet, uh, but it is also coming from a non-major blogger that was, you know, putting information out from behind the firewall, so to speak, or, or at least bringing stuff out from behind the firewall. So, um, you know, we still don't know how much of this is, you know, has the potential of being real, but there are little things that are happening in the media around the premiere that might give it a little bit of credibility in the sense that he has been showing and speaking more in a, in a, in a larger sense that he, than he normally would have, because G would have normally ha handled all of those conversations. Or he's set to take a fall for something bad, or maybe he's set to take the fall for, uh, some of the bad events that are happening or something, and then he comes back, you know, something really bad happens. Uh, people do not like G there right now, of course, because they are locking down people. They're getting ready for something. Uh, they don't have the same kind of political structure that as we, they do here. It's kind of like we, you do what we say and we'll watch you if you don't uh, or take you out. So not not a fun time for many. And then passenger with no idea how to fly a plane lands a Cessna at the Air, uh, Florida airport after pilot suffers possible medical emergency. A passenger without any flight experience managed to safely land a plane in Florida Tuesday after the pilot suffered a possible emergency. Dramatic audio between the passenger air traffic controllers revealed the tense moments before the single engine Cessna 208 landed at Palm Beach International Airport. It's it, You can go listen to this uh, when I believe it's on YouTube as well. Um, but again, it says, uh, Roger, what's your position? <clears throat> a controller responds. I have no idea. I can see the coast of Florida in front of me and I have no idea. It says a controller can be heard instructing the passenger to maintain wings level and just try to follow the coast either north or southbound. Minutes later, air traffic controllers were able to locate the plane on radar and walk the passenger through how to land the small plane. The aircraft landed safely and one patient was transported to a local hospital. I wonder, like, now some of you are pilots here, how hard is it to actually fly? I know that a lot, uh, if it's a Cessna, with, if you have everything set right, is it that actual hard? Is it like driving a car? And I know it's not, but I'm saying the actual joystick, it, once you get it down, it just doesn't, when I actually watch a pilot, when I've been in the little Cessnas and stuff, it, it, they're not like doing 50 million switches before they land. They just kind of get it to where they need to be. 
Is it like looking how level it is and getting it to the right spot? It, it seems like it wouldn't be that difficult, but I'm sure that there's lots of like check marks you have to have in your head and things you have to have done. Um, we've seen this happen before where multiple people have landed a plane like this. Now, a commercial jetliner, I would think that that would be a whole nother level because there's systems that you wouldn't even know how to look at to tell you if the plane is like this. It might feel like it's like this, but you have, you know, 100, 110 feet behind you. Uh, is it that hard? It, and I know I'm not trying to downplay anybody's uh, license and the fact that you went through school to do it. But, you know, as far as landing and takeoff, I would think it would be the hardest, obviously. And then Outlaw Josie, thank you for stopping by. J Girl, that's me. Miss Jackson, Renee 377, thank you again. Irish Rebel, appreciate your support tonight. Thank you so much. I hope Gone Girl, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. And then, of course, uh, we have uh, Veteran Steve, EOD, uh, Vet. Thank you, guys. I love you guys. Bobby of Joy, thank you so much. Just wanted to send some love. Things are crazy. Uh, thank you. And Anna Trejos, Avanel Hansen, again, thank you for your support. Uh, now, what do you think about all of these uh, stories here? Let me know in the comments below. Is there one that really stuck out to you? Let me know, uh, again, in the chat and in the comments. Uh Dex, we have a lot of web-only stuff that's just absolutely nuts. Do you want to go over there? Yeah, absolutely. So head over to marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show. And by the way, we didn't do a show last night, but there is web-only content there for last night. So if you want to get a double dose, just click on the other thumbnail, right? Um, everything is there. It's all of the additional content. A lot of this stuff is right now a lot of political stuff going on, especially with the season we're in. Um, things that are too hot for TV or just too far to one side. So um, one of the highlights, so a lot of stuff happening with the Supreme Court, but more specifically what's happening at their homes. So a lot of that's getting updated. You can learn more about it there. Um, obviously stuff going on with the machines that they count things with that is getting limelight. Um, how about this? There's something going on with uh, the baby formula. There's actually an update there, and it's kind of surprising where and who stashed a whole bunch of baby formula. Of course, there'll be a lot of finger pointing on that, so uh, very controversial, but go take a look. It is right there uh, on, on marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show. Get that. Get everything else, including updates on uh, a lot of what's happening with the, the road stuff and the back and forth that's going on with that, um, and much, much more. And uh, by the way, um, even a, a funny note about washing the the Washington Post and what they were trying to, <laughs> what they allowed on their their uh, their um, website <laughs> about Washington. So go take a look. A lot of a lot of good stuff there. Marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show. Scroll down to that web only content, or if you're on YouTube, open that description and click on show notes. It'll take you right there. One click and you're there. By the way, we've also covered over there the entire daily thing of trying to get T-Man to where he can't run again. It's a nonstop battle. They have been after him for, I mean, what now? Eight years. Uh, so go over there and check all that stuff out. There's tons over there. Make sure to check it out. It's it's always a plethora. All of that is collected and put into one place. So make sure to utilize that. Dex puts it all together on the website, and it's all in one place. So make sure to go over there and check it out. Love you guys. Uh, thank you, everybody who came tonight. Uh, Dex, how much time do we have left on uh, YouTube, or are we over? Uh, no, we're not over. We got a few. We usually flip at about five more minutes. So, All right. Well, thank you, guys. Love you, guys. It's now time for the shout -tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout -tro. It's where I say thank you to the people that matter most, you. If you are in chat, uh, just know if you say something, I'll say something. Thank you. Running on down the street and I knew they were coming for me
Let's make a fresh one for our top supporter tonight, Irish Rebel. Thank you. 